Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome to another fun week of English 101. Guys, we are so close to being done. Look, we have this week, we have next week, and then it's finals week. We are so, so, so close. So hang in there. I know this final push is tough. We get to this point of the quarter and we're tired, and we've got big projects coming in on all fronts or tests or essays. You name it. It's a really busy time of the quarter, but I just want to encourage you. You are so close to the finish line. Keep working hard, turn things in on time, and of course, reach out if you have any questions. This week, uh, we're not turning in a lot of stuff. We are working on our writing process more. So uh, this week, we're working on writing and revising our final big essay, that Project 3 Cultural Analysis. And we're also working on our annotated bibliography. We will be doing one round of peer review this week. So make sure you've got your essay drafted in a complete form before Thursday. That way you can get some really good feedback on this work. What I want to talk to you a little bit about today is our annotated bibliography because it is worth quite a few points and it might be something new that you haven't done before. So the annotated bibliography assignment is asking you to find research to support your argument and your analysis in your Project 3 essay. You're going to need at least three resources for this essay, and at least two of those need to come from the CBC library databases. Uh, you can feel free to use as many sources as you want, but I need at least three in the annotated bibliography, two of which come from the CBC library. Uh, an annotated bibliography is basically just a journal of the research that you found. Uh, so if you break down the name annotated bibliography, a bibliography is a list of sources and an annotation is like a paragraph where you're telling me about the sources. So it's a list of sources with paragraphs explaining them. Uh, and it has some very specific components. You want to have a citation and then you need a paragraph that tells me a little bit about the source you're using. Now that may sound a little bit vague, so I want to show you in the modules tab exactly how to put one of these together. So in our Project 3 folder, we have a whole section for the annotated bibliography. Here is a video that I think you're going to find extremely helpful. I walk you through some of the CBC library databases, and I walk you through how to make an annotated bibliography, including format and structure, which I think are very important because they're worth points in this. Uh, so make sure you watch that video as just a really brief overview of what you're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to show you a sample annotated bibliography document. This is also in the modules, obviously. Uh, da -da, there we go. All right. So you do not have to color code your document. I just did this to make it easier for you to see what we're working with. So an annotated bibliography is a separate document from the essay. It's completely separate. Uh, it will be in MLA format. So you've got your student name, instructor, class, and date. You have the title, which is Annotated Bibliography. You don't have to reinvent the wheel on that one. And then we start with our citations. Now, all of our citations are going to be alphabetized by the first letter that appears in the citation. So if this is the author's last name, awesome. If it's the title of an article, awesome. Just go with whatever that first letter is when you're alphabetizing. You'll have your uh, citation with a hanging indent. And then you will begin your annotation paragraph where you tell me about your source. Uh, all of this should be double spaced Times New Roman 12 point font with one inch margins. In this sample I've given you, we have a little bit of summary. So just a sentence or two about the topic, the big idea of the article. In blue, I'm showing you how you plan on using this in your essay. One of the great things about an annotated bibliography is it gives you a chance to have a repository, a place to put all of your quotes that you want to use so you don't have to keep flipping back through the articles. You can just pop all your quotes in here, include the in-text citation, and then copy and paste from here into your essay when you start writing your essay. So it actually saves a ton of time. Uh, so put how you plan on using this article in your essay. And then at the end, I want you to evaluate the effectiveness of this article. How do you know it's reliable? How do you know it's giving you good information? How do you know it's avoiding uh, extreme bias? Um, so tell me about that a little bit in this green section. Once again, you don't have to color code if you don't wish. You're more than welcome to, but you don't have to color code. This is just a visual to show you how this is going to come together. And when you're putting together your annotated bibliography, 
uh, you will put each citation directly following the other. So you don't need a separate page for each citation. It'll just be citation number one, boom, citation number two, citation number three. Does that make sense? They will directly follow one another and just wrap through the pages as necessary. So that's your annotated bibliography format. All of that is available for you in the modules tab. So make sure you're checking out that project three folder for you there. Uh, and make sure you're watching that video because I think you're going to find that really, really helpful. I had a couple questions about the essay outline. And we talk about this outline in our video, which is also posted in the modules to have the recorded lecture on the cultural analysis essay. Uh, in this particular essay, we've got our standard intro paragraph with a thesis statement at the end. We want to avoid first person language, so delete any time the word I shows up in your essay. Then we want to give context for the event. Think of this as the summary, like in project two, you had to give a summary of the case. Uh, that's basically what this paragraph is. It's a summary of what's happening. And then you move into your analysis of cultures. And so you can divide these cultures into the uh, aggressor culture, if you wish, and uh, perhaps the victim culture. So if I was doing the Charlton, Charleston church shooting, the aggressor culture would be uh, white supremacists, this is, there we go, slash KKK memberships. And the victim culture would be uh, black Southern churchgoers or religious people or people as a part of that community. So you would go ahead and tell me all about the culture uh, and then you would uh, and it, provide an analysis of that culture. So you can do it however you want. You can do the aggressor culture first and then the victim culture or vice versa. Uh, you've got lots of options here. So take advantage of the uh, flexibility of this outline. Make it work for you, basically. Uh, and then we're going to talk about bias. Was the bias that happened conscious or unconscious? What kind of reaction did we see as a nation to this event? Um, were any actions taken to prevent this from happening in the future? And then in this next paragraph, the moving forward paragraph, what steps can we take on a national level, a local level, and a personal level? And that's where you can use that implicit bias test if you want. National level is pretty straightforward. Local level, you could talk about the Tri-Cities, you could talk about Washington State, you could talk about CBC if you wanted. Um, it depends on how specific you want to be. And then personal level is obviously pretty straightforward as well. Then we wrap it all up with our conclusion. So that's our outline. Hopefully that clarifies any questions folks had about that. Everything you need is in the modules tab here. I know I sound like a broken record when I keep saying that, uh, but really do make sure to watch through these two recorded lectures. They're going to give you a lot of information to work with. And I look forward to seeing how these things come together for you in the peer review this week. So work on your annotated bibliography, work on your essay, submit to the peer review on Thursday. And if you find yourself uh, needing a little extra help, remember you can get extra credit by taking your essay to the CBC eTutoring Center or the Online Writing Center and sending me an email with their comments. Uh, you can also get extra help uh, with the librarians if you're having a hard time finding sources. Just click on this live chat with a CBC librarian and it will take you to a place where you can ask all your questions and get the support you need. And honestly, the librarians are such time savers. Like I've been doing research and writing for a very, very long time, like 15 years. Uh, and I still ask librarians for help. I truly, truly do. Because if I'm looking for a specific source, it might take me an hour to find it. I'll eventually get there, but it might take me an hour to find it. The librarians, it'll take five minutes. So which is a better use of your time? Calling the librarians, obviously, so much faster. Uh, so if you need help, reach out to the librarians. They're amazing, and they're here to support your learning. Uh, so if you have any questions, guys, reach out. I'm here to help. Otherwise, continue working on your excellent projects.